I want you to hit me as hard as you can. The 1988 canon cult classic Bloodsport traces the triumphs of ferocious fighter Frank Dux. No, no, no. It's Dukes. Gotcha. Like, put up your Dukes, right? As he battles his way through the underground martial arts competition known as the Kumite. This sweat-soaked action flick, starring the muscles from Brussels himself, Jean-Claude Van Damme, was purportedly based on the real story of Frank Dukes, a wildly colorful character who also served as fight coordinator on the film. But was Frank Dukes indeed a badass martial artist? Or a fraudulent, self-promoting huckster? Or something in between? Get ready to make full contact and find out what the fuck really happened to this movie. First, a bit about what we know is true about Frank Dukes. Born in Toronto on April 6, 1956, Dukes really did serve in the U.S. Marine Corps Reserve from 1975 to 1981. However, in his memoir, Secret Man, An American Warrior's Uncensored Story, which has since been pulled from publication due to controversy, Dukes claimed to have served overseas in Vietnam, where he allegedly earned the Medal of Honor and other esteemed decorations. But there are zero official records of Dukes ever leaving the U.S. and serving overseas, and his service records indicate no sign of ever receiving the commendations he claimed to have earned. In fact, the Freedom of Information Act reveals that in 1978, military doctors recommended that Dukes seek psychiatric evaluation for exhibiting, quote, flighty and disconnected ideas. Even more damning, in B.G. Burkett's award-winning book, Stolen Valor, the author outed Dukes as a fraud who never served in Vietnam at all, especially since the war had already concluded by the time he enlisted. But Dukes refuted this by saying he never claimed that he served in Vietnam specifically, only clandestine missions in Southeast Asia. However, Dukes is again contradicted in his infamous 1980 interview with Black Belt Magazine in an article entitled Kumite, A Learning Experience, which states he has a distinguished military record in the Vietnam conflict. Likewise, a 1987 issue of Inside Kung Fu Magazine also described Dukes as a Vietnam veteran. In Stolen Valor, Burkett included a photo of Dukes posing in his military uniform, proudly boasting his honorary medals and ribbons, which were incorrectly displayed out of sequence and were later revealed to be part of a Halloween costume. Dukes also wore an army medal in the photo, even though he served in the Marines. In Bloodsport, Frank Dukes goes AWOL from his military post to fight in the Kumite, a secret illegal mixed martial arts tournament held every five years in a different city and featuring the deadliest and most skilled fighters in the world. According to Dukes, he never went AWOL, but did participate in the three-day, 60-round, single-elimination Kumite event in 1975, which took place in Nassau in the Bahamas rather than Hong Kong as depicted in the film. But Dukes takes the story much further, claiming he was a CIA operative, saying, My involvement in that tournament was part of a plan to infiltrate the criminal organizations that organized the fights. The original idea was to participate in the Kumite tournament and make a few contacts. We initially assumed I would lose, but eventually I became one of the best Kumite fighters to ever participate in the event. Dukes's supposed CIA involvement under director William J. Casey, who died in 1987 before confirming any of this, has also been disputed multiple times over the years by several prominent intelligence figures, including director of Central Intelligence Robert Gates and General Norman Schwarzkopf, further questioning Dukes's reliability as the narrator of his own life story. Dukes has even backtracked with his own memoir, declaring that he was misrepresented on the book cover, which boasts he was the CIA's finest covert operative. This kind of uncertainty all seems pretty standard when it comes to Dukes's convoluted biography. Dukes's boastful Kumite fighting record has also been under heavy scrutiny over the years. At the end of Bloodsport, Dukes's credentials are displayed. But this is purely Dukes's word, as none of these records have ever been officially substantiated. First of all, a note about the Kumite itself. In 1988, Kenneth Wilson, spokesman for the Bahamas Ministry of Sports, rejected the entire existence of the tournament, stating that, quote, it was impossible a martial arts tournament of that scale could have been kept a secret. 
Dukes also asserts that he was the only American to win the Kumite, and says he was only allowed to speak about the event publicly as a way to recruit more American fighters. In the previously mentioned 1980 Black Belt article, Dukes claims his fighting record was 321, 1, and 7, which not only differs from the movie's undefeated statement, but also in 2014, Dukes told Access TV that he ended his fighting career with a perfect record. These kinds of inconsistencies make it a challenge to believe any of Dukes' claims. Inside Kung Fu Magazine editor Curtis Wong has publicly questioned Dukes' alleged consecutive streak of 56 knockouts in a single tournament, saying it would be mathematically impossible due to the overall number of participants in the Kumite. With no way of actually proving Dukes' unfathomable fighting record, his history remains a mystery. Prominent MMA website Fightland named Dukes as one of the biggest martial arts frauds. What we do know is true is that Dukes indeed helped raise the profile of the ninjutsu martial art he practiced in the film and in real life. He even created the Dukes Ryu ninjutsu spin-off practice, which he taught in Southern California for decades. In the film, his trainer is named Senzo Tiger Tanaka. Dukes admits this character is actually an amalgam of the real Tanaka and a man named Jack Seki, an extended Tanaka family member. Dukes says he began training with the quote world famous Tanaka at age 16 after being recruited by the sensei. But despite supposedly being world famous, there is also zero evidence that Tanaka actually ever existed. There are no records of his birth, death, or life. In fact, the character's name appears to be ripped from Ian Fleming's 1964 James Bond novel, You Only Live Twice, in which the ninja commander is named Tiger Tanaka. When Dukes was confronted about this so-called coincidence, he countered by saying that Fleming often named his characters after real people. For years, Dukes said that he had no clue of Tanaka's whereabouts, stating the two ended on bad terms in the 1970s. But in 2016, Dukes' website declared that Tanaka died in Japan. Then, a year later, Dukes claimed he found Tanaka's death certificate, which stated he died in Los Angeles in 1975. More conflicting information from a guy who spins more webs than Peter Parker. While Tanaka's existence has never been verified, Jack Seki's has. Seki was a skilled jujitsu master who trained under his legendary father, Sanzo Seki. But there is little documentation proving Seki's mentorship to Dukes. One fabrication that Dukes will admit to is the film's first meeting with his sensei. In Bloodsport, a teenage Frank breaks into Tanaka's house to steal a sacred sword. Dukes said this was the producer's idea, and he initially objected, but then admitted it was a clever narrative device to help viewers understand the importance of martial arts and discipline on impressionable young minds. Before delving further into the details of the movie, let's see what screenwriter Sheldon Lettich had to say about the real-life character of Frank Dukes. In a 2012 interview, Lettich told Asian Movie Pulse, I had known Frank Dukes for a number of months before I came up with the idea for Bloodsport. Frank told me a lot of tall tales, most of which turned out to be bullshit, but his stories about participating in this so-called Kumite event sounded like a great idea for a movie. There was one guy who he introduced me to named Richard Bender who claimed to have actually been at the Kumite event and who swore everything Frank told me was true. A few years later, this guy had a falling out with Frank and confessed to me that everything he told me about the Kumite was a lie. Frank had coached him in what to say. Ledich also called BS on Dukes' military record and said that after increasing scrutiny, he stopped claiming that he won the Medal of Honor and then began saying that he'd never told anyone he won it. Ledich said by then, nearly everyone knew he was just a delusional daydreamer and a big bullshitter. Still, despite a glaring lack of proof, Frank Dukes maintains his implausible story as the unwavering truth and contends there has been a vast conspiracy for decades to delegitimize his accomplishments. For what possible reason? According to Dukes, so that rival martial arts instructors in Los Angeles could put him out of business and reap their own financial rewards in his absence. At one point, Dukes even claimed he wrote the script for Bloodsport himself, or at least said that his screenplay, entitled Enter the Ninja, not to be confused with the 1981 canon movie of the same name, was really the basis for Bloodsport. Sheldon Ledich rejected this as well, stating there was no script prior to what was written for Bloodsport. In 2013, Dukes also told BuzzFeed he designed Van Damme's fighting outfit in the film and even paid for it himself when local costumes purchased in Hong Kong were all wrong for the characters. 
In 1988, as Dukes' reputation further came under question upon the movie's release, Black Belt Magazine's writer and editor publicly expressed regret for naively publishing Dukes' story as truth years earlier, and even questioned the existence of the Kumite altogether. While the Kumite is believed to really exist, it seems pretty obvious that the tournament was not accurately depicted in Bloodsport, especially Dukes' status in its ranks. Dukes further strained credulity by insisting that the real-life ceremonial sword he was allegedly awarded for winning the Kumite in 1975 was sold in order to fund a mission to purchase the freedom of Philippine orphans, who Dukes says he rescued from ruthless pirates. Okay, so after wading through that pool of improbability, is anything in Bloodsport actually true? Well, there's the character of Ray Jackson, played by Donald Gibb, perhaps best known as Ogre from Revenge of the Nerds. Jackson is apparently based on two of Dukes' close friends, mainly Richard Robinson, a black belt in jiu-jitsu who Dukes says he first met at the Kumite in Nassau. Although Dukes would point critics to Robinson for corroboration of his Kumite fighting record, years later it was revealed that Robinson was actually Dukes' old high school buddy from Venice, California, which didn't help either of their reputations. Dukes has also said that Swedish karate champion Kurt Peterson helped inspire the character of Jackson. Amusingly, in the movie, the Jackson character doesn't demonstrate a single fighting move recognized by the martial arts community. So how about Dukes' hulking adversary in the film, Chong Lee, played by Bolo Young? He must have existed in real life, right? According to Dukes, he sure did. But again, perhaps unsurprisingly, Dukes also claimed the real Chong Lee died before the movie was made either succumbing to brain tumors or maybe perishing in a car accident? Yet another discrepancy. Dukes also says he was momentarily blinded during his match with Chong Li, but it was from a combination of sweat and herbal oil and not the intentional act of powdered villainy depicted in the movie. Well, what about the famous brick-breaking scene? Did that occur as seen in the film? Nope! While Frank did demonstrate a different method of dim mac, or death touch, on various TV shows and live exhibitions at the height of his martial arts career, he makes no claim of performing such a feat at the Kumite. Likewise, the ambitious journalist character and love interest in Bloodsport was completely made up for the film, with Dukes insisting that he would never be intimate with a woman so soon before a fight. Another addition by the filmmakers was Dukes being chased by a pair of American military officers sent to track down and arrest him. After all, Dukes claims he never went AWOL because he was actually on a top-secret CIA mission to infiltrate the Kumite. And that's probably as good a place as any to stop. By now, we've firmly established that Frank Dukes might have been a skilled martial artist, but also had a powerful penchant for weaving tall tales. He even once claimed to have thwarted an assassination attempt on Steven Seagal. But still, with all the conflict, conjecture, controversy, and apparent hyperbole, here's what is true about Bloodsport. Its success launched the action career of Jean-Claude Van Damme, and it remains an all-time badass fighting flick and a beloved classic among fans of martial arts movies. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our Joe Blow Videos channel, tell your friends who like this sort of content, and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all our latest videos. We are an independent company and we appreciate your support.